Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. If I could have your attention, I think we're about to ready to get started. My name is Mark Lambach, and I'm the director of uh, music activities here at Dunwoody United Methodist Church. We thank you so much for being here. We have a great program. This features our children's choirs, directed by Miss Nicole Norgard and Marianella Lopez. And we have our Tone Chimes Choir and our Youth Bell Bells of Flame Youth Handbell Choir. And of course, our Youth Choir with some special guests, instrumentalists, etc. So we're excited to uh, get this started for you. If you didn't hear the announcement about the nursery, the nursery is open if anybody needs uh, to take some kids down there. Uh, Debbie Lowry's down there ready and willing to accept whomever needs some help. Uh, so without any further ado, I'd like to invite our senior pastor, the Dr. Reverend Phil Schrader, to give us a prayer and welcome. Thank you, Mark. He's just given himself a new title, the Director of Music Activities. But uh, Mark is the most amazing music minister that I have ever worked with. Amen. He leads as a minister first and then brings music out of his ministry, and that is a wonderful blessing. Sunday after Sunday, I'm just amazed at how much better the music gets every week, and then he continues to outdo himself with this team, so thank you. Uh, we are so glad you're here tonight. I'm Phil Schrader, one of the pastors here, and if you don't have a place to go on Sunday mornings, we would love to have you come and visit. We have services at 8.30 in the chapel, 9 o'clock in the Fellowship Hall, and 1115 right here in this room. I invite you to pray with me this day. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks for the gift of music and the way that we come humbly to your manger this day, seeking good news, seeking your gentle touch, seeking a child to lead us into your preferred future where the wolf lies down with the lamb where those who are on opposing sides find their way to the middle under your love for them. Hear our hopes for our life together. Bless all these who come to share the gift of music today. May our worship be multiplied by their beautiful music. In your name we pray. Amen.
How can we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the King? With branches of cedar, the tree of royalty. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the eternal Christ? With garlands of wreaths of pine and fir, whose leaves are ever living, ever green. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, our Savior? With arrangements of holly and ivy, symbolizing his passion, death, and resurrection. How shall we prepare this house for the coming of Jesus, the Son of God? By hearing again the words of the prophets who foretold the saving of God. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. All glory to God in the highest. Let us pray. God of manger and star, let us enter your story once again and find ourselves kneeling with the shepherds, singing with the angels, and worshiping with the magi. Touch our hearts with the wonder of birth and the depths of your love. Speak to us in word and song and lift us to the realms of glory. Amen. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will raise up for David a righteous branch, and he shall reign as king and deal wisely, and shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In his days, Judah will be saved, and Israel will live in safety. And this is a name by which he will be called, The Lord is our righteousness. Preparation. The lighting of a new candle each of the four weeks before Christmas reminds us that something is happening, but more is yet to come. The circle of evergreens reminds us of the everlasting covenant offered in the birth of Jesus. The four candles symbolize hope, peace, joy, and love. 
Today, on the second Sunday of Advent, we light the second candle as a symbol of Christ, our peace. May the light sent from God shine in the darkness to show us the way of salvation. Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, 6 through 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in the land of the shadow of death, among them a light has shined. For unto us a child is born, unto us a child is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Peace, and Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. From ancient times, evergreens have been considered a symbol of eternity, a sign of God's everlasting nature. Uh, Isaiah tells us that there will be no end to the reign of Messiah. Therefore, we hang wreaths shaped in circles and place garlands of green as a sign of everlasting life. These are symbols of Christ's gift of eternal life and of the celebration of Christmas itself. We invite you to stand and join us in singing hymn number 196, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus.
Numbers chapter 4, verse 17. I see him, but not now. I behold him, but not near. A star shall come out of Jacob, and a scepter shall rise out of Israel. The poinsettia speaks to us symbolically in several ways and is representative of the entire life of Jesus. The star-shaped formation of ten leaves calls to mind the star which led the wise men to the baby Jesus. The red leaves are a reminder of the blood of Christ shed during his crucifixion, and the white leaves represent Christ's purity. Now I invite you to stand and sing the first two verses of Away in a Manger, hymn number 217.
Luke chapter 2, verse 6 through 7. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there is no place for them in the inn. The manger or crush is a reminder that Jesus Christ was born in the humblest of places because humankind would not make room in their heart to hold the Son of God. Jesus, who was born in this most modest beginning, has compassion on all God's children, from the humblest to the richest.
O oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the, all the earth. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Tell of his salvation from day to day. Declare his glory among the nations, his marvelous works among all the peoples. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Honor and majesty are before him. Strength and beauty are in his sanctuary. The singing of Christmas carols is one of the greatest joys of the season. We sing carols because they are a way of telling the story of the nativity and the birth of Jesus Christ, as well as explaining what happened around Jesus' birth. The songs enable us to encapsulate and express the joy, devotion, and awe-inspiring scenes of the nativity. Please remain seated as we, list, as we sing the first verse of each carol listed in your program.
And now a reading from Micah. But you, O Bethlehem, from you shall come forth one who is to rule Israel, whose origin is from ancient days. And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall live secure. For now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. In ancient times, the cedar was revered as the tree of royalty. It also signified immortality and was used for purification. We have placed this chrisman tree in the sanctuary as a symbol of Christ, who reigns as king forever and whose coming will purify our hearts. The term chrisman is a combination of the words Christ and monogram. Together, the decorations and even the tree itself tell a piece of the story of Jesus. Some examples of the ornaments on this tree and their symbols and their symbolism are the dove, a symbol of peace, pointed down to represent the Holy Spirit, which appeared as a dove when Jesus was baptized. The fish, one of the oldest Christian symbols. The fish symbolizes in the letters of the Greek word for fish, ichthus. Together, the letters mean Jesus Christ, Son of God, Savior. The butterfly, a symbol of transformation and immortal soul. The cross crosslet, a symbol that combines four Greek crosses to represent the spread of Christianity to the four corners of the earth. The angel of God, a symbol representing the angelic announcements of the birth at the birth and later the resurrection of Christ.
John chapter 1, verse 1 through 5, and verse 9 through 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and darkness did not overcome it. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not accept him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of the blood or of the will of the flesh, of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. As our final preparation for the coming of Jesus, the light of the world, we will light the Christmas tree. And in this time of Advent, whenever you see a lightened tree, let it call to mind the one who brings light into our darkness healing in our brokenness, and peace to all who will receive him. May this tree, arrayed in beauty and splendor, remind us of the life-giving cross of Christ, that we may always rejoice in the new life that shines in hearts. Go forth from this place and awaken people aware of the world's darkness, yet reaching for the light. Go 
Go forth from this place an expectant people, conscious of judgment in our midst, yet welcoming God's new order and justice. Go forth from this place a serving people, sensing anew the pain so many bear, yet confident God will bring healing even through you. May the God of peace be with us all this season and forever. Before we sing our final song, I wanted to say thank you to everybody for attending. This has been an amazing performance by all of our kiddos, and it has been wonderful to hear all of their talents. Um, We are going to go outside and celebrate that. Now that we have seen some of the the symbols of Advent, we're going to go see some of the symbols of the nativity outside. We have um, our nativity characters, our creatures, our camels and goats and all the other things out there along with food trucks. But we are going to follow from here with our song, Go Tell It on the Mountain, verses 1 and 3. And we will have uh, some caroling right outside the doors to kick that off. And then our whole nativity festival out there. And we hope you will join us outside.